Hi, my name is Antonis and I am the painter of this video. For today you will see me painting uh, the portrait of a man, uh, using as a reference the painting uh, of an Italian uh, artist called uh, Gian Battista Moroni. He is uh, a, a painter of uh, the Renaissance, uh, of the Venetian Renaissance and uh, it's uh, a beautiful portrait that inspired me to uh, to do this uh, study and uh, try to understand how these great masters uh, painted, what was their uh, technique, how they built the volume and the lights and the shadows on uh, their uh, portraits and uh, how I could uh, replicate uh, this uh, uh, masterpiece as uh, closely as I can. If you are interested in painting uh, portraits in the style of uh, these great masters, uh, feel free to, to watch with me this um, tutorial as I will try to explain as much as I can my process and which is, uh, I believe, closely based on uh, the, the process of these great uh, masters. As you see, I already have uh, transferred my uh, drawing on uh, my, my board. Uh, this is uh, uh, plywood uh, primed with gesso and uh, now I'm doing some uh, very basic under uh, painting. I do hope that uh, you are well, you are creative in your studio and uh, that you spend um, much time being creative and um, uh, progressing as uh, painters uh, uh, and as uh, artists. The purpose of uh, this underpainting is just to familiarize myself with my um, reference and uh, try to understand where the shadows will, will uh, be, where the, my lights will uh, fall, just to spend more time uh, uh, with uh, the painting that I am um, to study and uh, familiarize myself. This is because uh, many students uh, ask me uh, what's the purpose of uh, underpainting and uh, um, especially when they see how sloppy uh, the, un the underpainting uh, can uh, become. Um, what's the purpose of the underpainting, uh, especially when it's covered uh, uh, later on with uh, a more opaque uh, layer that covers uh, everything. In my opinion, nothing is... Uh, Nothing is without uh, a purpose or, or without uh, some merit in uh, painting. The more time you spend with your um, in your easel, uh, sitting on your easel and um, studying uh, and painting, the better, uh, in my opinion, is. So as you see here, just uh, do some uh, very basic uh, painting, um, really without. Uh, stress or without any you know anxiety I'm just playing around and um, then I will uh, let the painting uh, sit for uh, a couple of days just to to dry a little bit as I said this is uh, uh, oil and uh, if I tried to to move on to my next uh, um, step um, it would have really no po no purpose there as everything underneath uh, would be erased by my second layer of painting. This is uh, almost an uh, alla prima painting, portrait. Uh, alla prima means that uh, you can finish it in one sitting. Um, I painted this one in, uh, in two sittings. The one it was uh, the part that uh, you saw, the drawing and the uh, underpainting the drawing and now you see me um, in the rest of the video uh, you will see me painting the second um, uh, session of uh, painting where I will uh, uh, cover the, um, the underpainting with uh, let's say uh, the base colors let's say equivalent to those of uh, that we call proplasmi in uh, Byzantine iconography and uh, 
working uh, the portrait around in order to um, to finish it so as you see here on my next uh, on my second and uh, last as i said uh, session uh, the underpainting is uh, dry and uh, i will just try to cover everything with uh, some basic uh, colors so i've started with the darker color of uh, the hair and the beard and uh, now as you see i am uh, covering the whole face with this um, um, dark uh, brown color a very byzantine like uh, proplasmos uh, painting for uh, the face of this uh, uh, man there are uh, many um, many styles and many ways to paint a portrait I believe that um, um, these early masters uh, um, did cover all their uh, face uh, with uh, a base color and then they built their uh, shadows and uh, their lights on it pretty much like um, an iconographer did Here I will just uh, paint uh, the, the background with uh, a solid uh, grey color. For uh, the color of the proplosmos of uh, the, um, uh, the, hair, the, the face of this man, I've used some uh, ochre, some uh, uh, green, a little bit of green, a little bit of uh, white and some uh, yellow. And for the hair, I just added some uh, um, darker brown and a little bit of uh, black. Again, I don't have any specific uh, uh, recipes for the colors. I just uh, try to, uh, to see my reference and try to understand how the painter might have uh, painted this uh, portrait. Anyway, here... Um, um, Unfortunately, you can see it. Uh, it's uh, slightly out of focus. Uh, the the image will uh, become sharper uh, later. But uh, what I'm doing here is uh, much like in iconography. I try to establish my uh, facial characteristics and uh, and uh, my shadow parts. Now much of the um, of the drawing is uh, lost here, and the, the drawing that uh, was done with my underpainting is lost. So I have to, um, uh, while I'm doing this uh, shadow painting now, I have to also find these facial characteristics to redraw them with uh, my brush and um, establish them on this uh, base uh, color. I have to say that uh, this uh, um, method of covering uh, all my face with the base color uh, much in the iconography style and then uh, uh, moving on with my darker uh, colors uh, etc is uh, much more uh, familiar to me and um, very satisfying in the way it feels than just um, painting directly with uh, my lights on a white or grayish background or using a, a different uh, approach. I feel very uh, comfortable because uh, I come from this uh, iconography background and uh, this feels great to me. Of course, uh, oil is um, a very different medium than egg tempera or tempera in general, but it really does feel uh, easier to, to blend and uh, or different. It's a very different way to blend. I could say much uh, different. 
and uh, since we talk uh, here about uh, um, a painting which is um, made uh, in the Venetian uh, style, the Venetian school of painting, um, it's um, a portrait where the color is manipulated in a more free, more painterly way than the, um, the way painters of uh, Florence, um, Firenze, Italy, uh, used to manipulate uh, color. So, uh, masters like uh, Tiziano or um, this uh, Moroni or um, Tintoretto and uh, others uh, used the color in a very uh, free and uh, brushly, let's say, way. They felt uh, um, they used uh, harder brushes and uh, manipulated color in a more uh, painterly, free way and the result of that was really truly amazing. Um, if you compare the work of, uh, uh, just to understand this, if you compare the work of say Tiziano with uh, the work of uh, um, even uh, Michelangelo in Capella Sistina, uh, you will see the difference uh, of what I'm talking uh, about there. The, the paintings of Michelangelo feel a lot more uh, dry, a lot more, uh, let's say, um, strict than the, the paintings of uh, uh, masters of the Italian school like, uh, like uh, Tiziano and others. So here I'm doing these uh, um, shadow parts and uh, I feel uh, free to add these uh, grayish colors which are essential when uh, we paint uh, a portrait. A portrait, uh, our skin is never uh, just uh, um, uh, pink or uh, um, pink with ochre, there are some uh, uh, cold tones uh, underneath and uh, it's uh, great to um, to involve, to include these um, tones in our portraits, in our paintings. Okay, here the the video becomes a little bit uh, uh, sharper, better quality. And uh, now, the same like in iconography, I will add my, uh, my lights. Um, as I said, this is the same session. The, the color underneath is uh, wet. And uh, I proceed cautiously here, trying to see um, if uh, I will need to continue in another session or if I can uh, add uh, this layer of uh, light using uh, oil uh, on this same day in the studio. I see that it's not uh, that bad. My color does not become very muddy. It doesn't um, uh, excessively blend with uh, my, let's say, my base color. So it seems that uh, I might be able to to proceed in this same day without uh, any serious issues. When uh, painting alla prima, and especially when uh, uh, we use uh, a base uh, color. Mm, if uh, the base color is too wet, we can wait a couple of days because this will really interfere with uh, our light uh, uh, layer and uh, it's not... Uh, uh, things will become uh, really muddy and uh, hard to, to work with. Many painters of uh, the past have used uh, uh, until this uh, stage of uh, of light, uh, have painted uh, um, their portraits uh, with uh, tempera, uh, egg tempera or uh, other, and uh, the tempera dries quickly, so they will uh, proceed with oil painting for on the later stages of uh, their painting. 
this is something that um, I want to experiment with and see um, if the result is uh, any better or if it is more satisfying or just quicker to work with because we have to understand that uh, um, these artists were uh, professionals and uh, they were not just interested in painting a beautiful face they were also interested in painting uh, quickly painting um, a big volume maybe of uh, uh, work uh, for a church or something like something like that in a way that was uh, efficient nice uh, and uh, quick they couldn't just spend a whole day painting uh, probably just uh, uh, a face uh, or just uh, um, the eyes of a portrait uh, they didn't have this uh, luxury they were artists and the professionals and um, they they had a, a slightly different approach uh, um, to painting than the one we believe they had so i'm uh, at this point I'm painting with uh, using two colors I have um, a basic uh, light color uh, with uh, white and uh, ochre and a little bit of uh, red then I have um, um, a slightly more pinkish uh, reddish color where I add a little bit uh, more of cadmium red for the cheeks and then I also have my grayish tones that uh, I mix them with uh, these uh, two that I've said in order to achieve this beautiful uh, blend on the edge of his uh, cheek and uh, the beginning of uh, the beard The important thing uh, at this point is to um, <laughs> to not uh, freak out about uh, the, um, uh, the the messiness, how messy the painting uh, looks. Um, have faith that uh, things will become better, and um, at the same time uh, uh, try to enjoy and uh, understand. Um, how this uh, mysterious uh, material works oil to me is um, a very strange material I can't really grasp uh, um, its uh, properties how it works and um, that's why I can't uh, really explain to you what uh, exactly I'm doing here. I'm just working uh, uh, by instinct, I would say. I'll just try to um, to observe and uh, to observe my reference and uh, and achieve what I'm observing. Sometimes uh, when you use oil, the result, uh, a beautiful result, uh, happens uh, in a magic way without even trying to um, to achieve it. I don't know how it happens. Maybe this is because I'm I'm coming from uh, a tempera tradition, and um, this blending uh, is uh, for me easy. No, I mean that uh, if you want to blend something in tempera, you have to uh, to work in layers and uh, try very hard to do this blending. And uh, when you transfer to oil, this blending is uh, so much uh, different and uh, can be achieved uh, in a much easier, easier way.
at the same time you have to be careful to not uh, um, to, to not make the colors uh, muddy uh, blend excessively like uh, and like a mud try to to keep their uh, luminosity and uh, their uh, uh, character Anyway, if uh, you find this uh, content helpful, please uh, consider subscribing in uh, this channel. Um, and uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, all of you who participate in this community. You ask uh, questions. I try to, to answer them all uh, as much as I can. And um, feel free to, to send me your artwork or um, any questions you might have feel free to answer uh, questions from uh, uh, other uh, painters in the comments uh, section below and uh, i would also like to thank um, uh, my patrons for uh, um, supporting me and uh, helping uh, me with uh, this channel So at this point, uh, you just uh, see me painting um, by instinct and uh, trying to um, to just move the colors around in a way that looks nice and uh, uh, convincing. I suspect that uh, the brushes for uh, oil, when painting with oil, um, do not need to be as, uh, um, let's say, um, of great quality, if I can say this, uh, as the, the brushes when, uh, when I paint with egg tempera. When painting with uh, egg tempera, the brushes uh, must be sharp, they must be pointy they must have some uh, um, spring in them and uh, uh, after some use uh, the brushes for tempera are not uh, longer um, suitable as they become um, as they lose their uh, point and um, they lose their ability to keep uh, color for long for uh, when using when painting with uh, oil brushes uh, are just uh, the uh, the way to the tool to move the color around um, according to of course they are very very important um, but uh, i guess there are many ways to move color around that's why um, there is also the spatula painting with uh, when painting with oil and uh, um, you can uh, use very successfully an uh, old brush if you clean the brush and you just take uh, some care of it you can uh, keep uh, an oil brush uh, for uh, many many years and uh, feel uh, familiar with the brush and comfortable to use Just try to uh, to always feel comfort comfortable with uh, your brushes and uh, to feel that uh, uh, you control the the medium and uh, you're not uh, uh, under uh, the medium's control. So feel uh, feel free to uh, to paint with any brush uh, you like as long as. Uh, it makes you control uh, what you paint. Uh, 
after you paint with uh, the, this uh, oil colors um, you must uh, clean the brushes with uh, turpentine um, I just uh, clean them a little bit and uh, wipe them with uh, some paper uh, um, some paper there and then uh, I can if, uh, if you want you can also soap uh, use some soap to clean them uh, even more thoroughly I have to say that uh, at this point of uh, the painting uh, I feel uh, um, captivated by not only by the painting of uh, Gian Battista Moroni here the way he has uh, painted his uh, portrait but also from uh, the subject uh, itself the the face of uh, this uh, man it's uh, great to see um, that uh, Moroni here the painter has uh, captured the uh, the, the gaze of uh, this young man um, back from uh, uh, 1500 uh, almost uh, 500 years uh, uh, ago and uh, this man feels so contemporary so modern so um, such a person of uh, the 21st century that uh, it really is uh, amazing how people stay the same and um, it makes me uh, think and um, contemplate a little bit on uh, human nature the how people uh, want always the same things to live, to dream to and uh, that's uh, something that uh, inspires me always and uh, moves me when uh, it comes to painting. Seeing portraits uh, from people uh, uh, from the past is truly uh, moving in some ways. You can uh, always check the Fayum portraits painted um, um, almost uh, 2000 years ago and um, you will truly be amazed by their um, the, how they how vivid uh, they look and uh, how contemporary and uh, modern these people uh, look I try to not cover my uh, more my colder uh, grayish uh, tones as they are uh, truly important uh, here and um, at the same time try to keep my color um, clean and uh, functional at the same time For those of you who understand iconography and uh, um, come in this channel and watch this with uh, a, a background on iconography, it's going to be easier to understand what I'm doing if I tell you that uh, I'm still painting uh, now this portrait with uh, this uh, first uh, uh, with you, with the first photosma, the first layer of uh, light, let's say. I'm not. Uh, I haven't yet moved to a second light, and uh, this will uh, make you understand better what I'm uh, uh, doing here. So I haven't uh, yet added some white on my on the light that uh, uh, I started uh, on this portrait. I've started uh, using a light uh, before and I'm still using the same uh, 
uh, light. In a little bit I will add some uh, white to that and uh, with this second let's say light I will paint my more uh, um, uh, lighted uh, areas. I'm just um, at this point uh, you will see me just uh, blending and uh, adding color, blending and uh, adding color. I suspect that uh, um, if I waited a couple of days after I painted my base colors, um, it might be better uh, somehow. Um, especially if I wanted a, a portrait who, that would be more uh, smooth or uh, less uh, with uh, brush strokes that were less evident. I like though this. Uh, approach uh, with uh, the, the harsh uh, brush strokes and the wet uh, feeling of uh, the portrait. Um, but uh, at the same time uh, I'm curious to see what would happen if uh, um, I didn't paint this portrait um, almost a la prima, but uh, if I uh, waited a couple of days for it to relax and dry. As you see, the portrait uh, is uh, pretty much. Uh, um, it's looking uh, okay at this point. Um, looks good. I'm happy. It's very important to to know where to stop. Um, when painting, some uh, people uh, overpaint uh, their uh, their works, and uh, some others um, do not have the confidence to to proceed and to paint also a little bit uh, more. It's important at this point. I feel that um, I can push a little bit uh, more the the study. Um, I can continue a little bit more painting and uh, achieving a more satisfying uh, result. There are these areas on, uh, on the cheek and his beard where uh, um, the, the hair is uh, thinner and the uh, parts of his uh, skin is visible and uh, that's a beautiful uh, detail from uh, Moroni's painting uh, that uh, I want to, to include in my study as well. And again, the more I proceed with painting this study, the more uh, I am amazed by this man's uh, gaze and uh, his expression, his uh, manly characteristics that are um, very piercing and very um, beautiful uh, to see. I would like to thank my um, my viewers. Some of my viewers uh, truly responded uh, great um, in a previous video of mine where I said how uh, winter is uh, difficult for me. It's hard, and um, how I tend to be more uh, um, <laughs> more let's say melancholic in during the winter. Uh, 
Uh, I would like to thank these uh, subscribers. Uh, I received messages of uh, support and uh, um, saying to me how we are almost uh, uh, in spring and uh, <laughs> things will be better. I I want to share with you how blessed I feel for uh, for being able to work in uh, my studio and um, um, to, to play a little bit with uh, colors, with uh, brushes and uh, to, to, be, to feel quiet and um, cozy um, in the company of these uh, great masters and uh, great painters. I'm sure that uh, many of these uh, artists uh, felt similarly. It's uh, just natural and uh, uh, part of the human nature to feel uh, the fragility of, uh, of uh, humans. Anyway, I will not uh, bother you more with my uh, existential existential uh, crisis. <laughs> uh, although I have to say it's good to share with you because uh, I'm sure that um, uh, as you are so amazing, uh, I will receive uh, um, uh, much support and uh, positive uh, from you, positive comments from you. Uh, this is uh, probably the most rewarding uh, part of having uh, a channel where I can uh, um, paint these uh, tutorials. Um, the communication part, I know that uh, I cannot respond properly to all of you. The, the volume of uh, the messages is great. But I truly do my best and um, uh, I read and uh, um, I read all your messages and I'm very happy, very glad, especially when you send me your uh, artworks and uh, your artistic progress. That's uh, really nice. I don't have to say at this point uh, much on uh, the process here. I just uh, uh, I just try to blend uh, here and there and uh, try to be um, uh, faithful to the, to the reference. I guess I could have stopped painting this portrait uh, um, some time ago, it would be okay. But um, I'm still pushing it a little bit more and see if um, something better will uh, happen. Now, the more I study these uh, uh, great masters of uh, Italy, of Venice, uh, the more I explore this world of uh, naturalistic uh, painting from uh, the masters, um, the, the more I appreciate uh, their uh, uh, brush strokes, uh, the way they built uh, the forms with uh, very um, simple and um, to the point uh, brush strokes and um, the the less i would say i would uh, i start um, admiring and appreciating portraits and uh, artworks that are painted in a very photorealistic uh, way of course there are some uh, paintings uh, done with uh, photorealism that are truly amazing and uh, they are part of the history of art that's uh, um, that's uh, really nice and uh, i admire and respect that um, but uh, as you might have seen there are uh, hundreds of uh, many many artists who paint in this or draw using pencils and uh, charcoal paint in a very photorealistic way 
some portraits uh, with uh, every tiny little wrinkle um, <laughs> very often these portraits have some uh, liquid element on them they are uh, either um, women or men in uh, a bathroom taking a shower or there is some uh, water on their face just because they have uh, it's um, more uh, um, impressive um, usually these portraits are uh, done in a big scale in order for in order for the artist to um, uh, to achieve this uh, uh, lifelike uh, lifelikeness this photorealistic uh, details but um, to me this becomes just uh, this loses part of the uh, the artistic uh, let's say process the creativity it's just a mechanical way to if i can say that I don't want to disrespect anyone, just uh, expressing my opinion. Um, I feel that uh, it's uh, more to impress uh, and uh, show off uh, um, on somebody's uh, creative uh, artistic uh, drawing skills uh, rather than um, giving soul and giving the... Uh, giving something to the work of art that is unique, creative, or um, it's almost as if the painting does not pass through the artist, uh, is not enriched by the artist's uh, character and soul, and uh, just the hand of the artist becomes uh, an extension of uh, the camera. So... Um, I used to, the first time I encountered these portraits, I was uh, uh, truly fascinated by them and uh, I was really um, taken aback from uh, the, the drawing and painting abilities of uh, these painters. Now I am a little bit more, um, let's say, um, accustomed to these uh, paintings, these images, and uh, I appreciate more paintings that are more uh, painting-like. We are uh, humans, we are uh, not robots, we... Um, it's nice to see the brush stroke there, it's nice to, to see that the painting is not uh, perfect, you don't have to paint every tiny little wrinkle, so... There. And of course, this is something uh, the great masters uh, understood. And uh, if you see their work uh, in detail, you will understand this uh, perfectly. For some reason, uh, when I'm saying this, I just have in mind the work of uh, Diego Velázquez. Um, the way that he interpreted uh, the textiles, uh, the, um, the skin, the clothes, everything was truly amazing. He didn't have to paint every, every little detail um, of uh, the portraits that uh, he painted. With uh, uh, very clever brush strokes, he, he could uh, convey the feeling of um, a cloth, of uh, the skin, everything. So now in, uh, in this portrait I am adding uh, a little bit uh, um, more uh, lights. I try to lit the face uh, a little bit more. Um, at this point um, keeping color uh, fresh is uh, a struggle since the portrait is uh, really wet and um, you can't uh, just... Uh, um, 
you have to be very careful when you uh, add the color so I feel that there is uh, just a little bit more to do like uh, some uh, details and uh, um, giving some light uh, on uh, here on the eye um, and the, um, some parts of uh, the forehead again blending is uh, always part of the process when painting in oil you go back and forth moving from uh, shadows to light I feel there is some uh, uh, lighting to be painted here on the eye directly um, the portrait uh, um, gets some life becomes more vivid with just a tiny little dot um, I when I paint I'm painting this uh, light um, I try to give it some uh, um, some life to it i'm just i'm not just uh, painting uh, this uh, dot and uh, that's it i try to uh, manipulate it a little bit try to blend it uh, a little bit with uh, the iris um, i'm just uh, playing with uh, this highlight a little bit and uh, here on the forehead also A second uh, light now when uh, you paint with uh, oil especially uh, in this way where the color is uh, wet underneath one very useful trick useful uh, uh, way to keep the color uh, um, nice and fresh is to add a little bit of uh, medium in those uh, upper layers of uh, color so as you see I am uh, painting uh, I'm this uh, whitish uh, second light and um, I'm not just using uh, the titanium white uh, here I add also some oil medium some linen oil to make this color a little bit more uh, fat more fatty so the more uh, um, if, we, if we say that uh, we built the portrait in um, layers of course uh, these layers are uh, wet and uh, not uh, the same thing uh, like in iconography but uh, if we say that we add color, the, every time you add color on a wet color, this uh, uh, second layer or third layer should be a little bit more uh, fat than the previous one. So if you make, uh, let's say, a color that is ochre with white and a little bit of red, a skin color, uh, a skin like color. Um, that has 10% uh, of uh, uh, linen color uh, added into it uh, the next time you will add uh, a color on that area uh, that second color should uh, have uh, medium should consist should consist of oil that is 20% uh, 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 let's say of consistency I know that uh, this is uh, hard for you to understand especially the way i express myself uh, and uh, i use uh, language i know this uh, just keep in mind that um, um, every time you add color on uh, a wet color uh, it's good to add a little bit more uh, medium uh, just to make the color stay and uh, not um, uh, wipe the color underneath of course you have to be um, um, <laughs> what's the word uh, you have to be um, uh, careful with uh, how much uh, uh, 
medium you use especially if your medium is just uh, linen the um, you have to be very careful as linen tends to yellow with time and um, your portrait will uh, or your painting will acquire a yellowish uh, tint with uh, within some uh, months so just uh, keep that in mind when you add the uh, medium and uh, you will be fine now there is a possibility if uh, you don't add uh, uh, that medium and you don't paint with uh, the the idea that says uh, that uh, each layer should be fattier than uh, uh, its previous that uh, you run the risk uh, to uh, for the painting to crack in time and uh, have these um, uh, fissures is this uh, how you call them anyway uh, adding medium uh, as you proceed is uh, is good just uh, don't do it uh, excessively and uh, uh, too much now the portrait feels uh, good to me at this point i feel that uh, um, although i was on the verge to uh, destroy this painting by adding too much wet color and uh, blending it uh, too much um, I feel that uh, it's okay and uh, it feels uh, uh, good I'm almost uh, uh, finished with uh, this and uh, I truly feel that I've learned uh, something out of uh, this portrait I would like to thank uh, all of you for being here and uh, listening to my mumble for <laughs> almost an hour. Um, I would like especially to thank my patrons on patreon.com for their amazing support, um, their uh, financial support of this channel. Um, your support uh, truly helps me make these videos and uh, I admire you for jo for your uh, generosity and um, for wanting to support me so I, I want to give a big thank a big thank you to uh, Luz Cannon, Dimitris Katsoulas, Mary Burke, Christine Dyson and uh, Lisa Manery these are my uh, new patrons on uh, patreon.com you guys uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, your support it's really amazing and uh, i hope you these videos will inspire you to continue being creative be amazing and um, I can express to you how much your uh, support uh, uh, means to me. Uh, I want to thank all of you, of course, for uh, um, subscribing and uh, participating in this channel. We are almost uh, um, 5,000 people here who are interested in uh, this content and um, truly thank you so much for uh, for your support uh, and your help and uh, um, feel free to, to participate uh, ask questions uh, like this video press the like button if you like this video and um, let me know everything uh, uh, you might uh, want to see for uh, next ideas for uh, other videos or how you believe I can help you with uh, um, with these videos Here some uh, final uh, details and uh, 
I have to say that uh, uh, I truly feel great about this uh, portrait. It looks uh, nice and uh, it looks very oily, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, the feeling is uh, very different uh, to that of egg tempera. Egg tempera would never... Um, um, it would be very hard maybe to achieve this uh, result with egg tempera. And... Uh, Yes, I'm truly happy, I feel great about this uh, portrait, uh, more because I feel that I've learned uh, uh, more about uh, the oil as a medium and I've uh, uh, familiarized a little bit more myself uh, to this uh, medium, that is very uh, important, nothing uh, is lost, every hour you spend uh, painting is not a lost uh, hour even if uh, by the end uh, you destroy the painting uh, uh, you have uh, gained uh, experience and uh, um, familiarized uh, yourselves with the medium so here are some uh, final uh, touches some final uh, um, effort to to finally finish this uh, uh, this portrait anyway thank you all so much for uh, participating for watching this video um, I hope you will stay creative and strong for uh, uh, until the next time uh, I will see you be creative and uh, have a beautiful week. I will see you soon with uh, another tutorial. Bye.